Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the sixth episode of Bridge the Gap. Our today's lesson is focused on the idea of proportionalities. That is when two quantities are directly proportional to one another or inversely proportional to one another. We'll also be solving a few questions that will give you guys an idea of how useful this understanding of proportionalities is when you're solving MCQs in your A-levels. So let's begin. We're going to first talk about direct proportionality. We say that two quantities are directly proportional to one another if they increase by the same ratio. That is, if x increases by two times, y also increases by two times. So that if y is directly proportional to x, so a two times increase in x will cause a two times increase of y. But it's not just the case that y is directly proportional to x. You can even say y can be proportional to x squared. You can have under root y being proportional to x. You can have under root y being proportional to x cubed. There could be multiple direct proportional relationships in which two quantities with their powers end up being directly proportional to one another. In simple terms, when we, whenever we say that two quantities are directly proportional, we mean that the ratio of quantities is same. Ratio of quantities is same. That is, no matter what value you pick, the ratio of y upon x will always be a constant value. Similarly, the value of y upon x squared will always be constant. The value of under root y upon x can always be constant. The value of under root y upon x cubed can always be constant. So you can deal with two quantities being directly proportional to one another by using their ratio. That if two quantities are directly proportional, I can say x1 over y1 is equal to x2 over y2. Or you can even say y1 upon x1 equals y2 upon x2. You can even write it as y1 upon x1 square equals y2 upon x2 square. Or you can write it as under root y1 upon x1 equals under root y2 upon x2. But there is a more simpler way of doing that. Now, the simpler way of doing this is using the ratio method, which says that if two quantities are directly proportional, you can simply write it down as this. For example, I say under root y was proportional to x, so I can use the proportionality method saying like this. For example, the value of y was 2. I'm going to place a root because y wasn't under root. And the value of x was 5. So if the value of y now increases from 2 to 4, what will be the new value of x? I'm repeating the question again. If y had a value of 2, x had a value of 5. If y is now having a value of 4, what will be the value of x? So when I'm applying the proportionality method, I have to make sure that I'm using the root on y because it was not y proportional to x, it was under root y proportional to x. And now you can multiply them, like you can have the cross multiplication. And this will look somewhat like this. Under root 2 into x equals 5 into under root 4. And from here you can find out the value of x. So if I can solve it, it's going to look somewhat like this. 5 into root 4 divided by root 2. Well, it turns out to be 7.07. .07. So you can use this idea of direct proportionality to solve a lot of questions and we'll be solving them. One more thing that you need to remember about two quantities being directly proportional is that whenever you draw a graph of these quantities, these graphs are going to be a straight line graph. And not just any straight line graph, a graph that's passing through the origin. For example, if I say I draw a graph of y against x and y was directly proportional to x, so the graph is going to be a straight line graph passing through the origin. It can have a different gradient, doesn't matter, but the graph is going to pass through the origin. It's pretty important. Straight line graph passing through the origin. Similarly, if y under root y was proportional to x, then a graph of under root y against x will also give you a straight line. 
if under root y was proportional to x, then a graph of under root y against x will also give you a straight line. Similarly, if I say the equation was uh, under root y directly proportional to x cube, so if a graph of under root y against x cube is plotted, because these two quantities were directly proportional to one another, again the graph is going to be a straight line passing through the origin. So whenever two quantities are directly proportional to one another, the graph is a straight line and passing through origin. These are the two important features. Similarly, if you go for inversely proportional relationships, inverse proportionalities come into existence when an increase in one quantity results in the decrease of another. If x increases, y decreases. But it's not as simple as it sounds. For two quantities to be inversely proportional to one another, the increase and decrease must be in the same ratio. That is, if x increases by two times, y should decrease by two times. The ratio, or should I say the product in the case of inverse proportionality, must be exactly the same. And I can explain this with numbers in such a way that if y is inversely proportional to x, and you remove the proportionality sign, you insert a constant. So y times x is equals to k. So whenever two quantities are inversely proportional to one another, their product always turns out to be the same value. So you can say by x1, y1 equals x2, y2. Similarly, if I say y is proportional to inversely proportional to x square and you remove the proportionality sign, you add a constant. So you can say the product of y and x square is always going to be constant. So we can say by x1 square y1 equals x2 square y2. You can do a similar relationship like if under root y was inversely proportional to x, I can write it down as under root y equals k upon x and then under root y times x equals k so we can say x1 times under root y1 equals x2 times under root y2 so whenever two quantities are inversely proportional their product will always be the same product is same Now, if I draw a graph for y and x, it's not going to be a graph like this. So it's not going to be a graph like this. Inverse proportionality graphs are decreasing gradient curves. The gradient decreases because as x increases, y decreases, but not with the same ratio, but with the same product. That is, whenever you see these two quantities, you are always going to have the same product. Similarly, if I plot a graph between, let's say, y and 1 over x, because we actually talked about the fact that y is inversely proportional to x. So if I consider 1 over x as a complete entity, as one single variable. I plot the entire 1 upon x on my x axis. Now these two quantities are directly proportional to one another. y is directly proportional to 1 over x. So the graph is now going to be a straight line graph because I plotted the entire quantity on the x axis. And I can do a similar effect over here. Let's say we had an equation, and that equation was y is inversely proportional to x square. So if I'm plotting y against 1 over x square, that is, I'm using the entire property as, or the entire 1 upon x square as a single variable, then my graph is going to be a straight line graph passing through the origin. In this case, the two quantities can be shown as being directly proportional to one another. So generally, whenever we are dealing with quantities that are inversely proportional, we tend to use the idea of the product to be exactly the same.
And it's pretty helpful when we're solving questions like these. In the next part of my video, we're going to be solving a few questions that will help us gain a better grip of the entire proportionality. That's it for today. Take care. Allah